Jolene.
glory. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. This morning I'll be reading to you from Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. He is, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Now, as we go to the Lord in prayer, let us be mindful of those who are on our prayer list, Bishop and the First Family, and those who are in Florida. Amen. Amen. We certainly honor the Lord for being here this morning. Isn't that right? Amen. By your heads, let us pray. Master, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus, Lord. First of all, thanking you for another day, Lord. Thanking you for allowing us to be here. Thanking you for allowing us to gather and celebrate you and give your name the praise for all the many things that you have done, Lord. We just want to take the time and stop and say thank you. Lord, you've been so good to us. Master, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And because of that, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your grace that you have extended toward us. We thank you for your mercy that we uh, endure and feel each and every day. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your love meeting us right where we are, right at the point of our need. Lord, we thank you for an in spite of blessing and not a because of blessing. Lord, we come saying thank you. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in this body of believers. Master, we thank you for what you're doing in this church. Lord, and not just this church, but churches around the world that are gathering today to give your name the praise. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this country. Bless those that are here, Lord, because we know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. And because we are dwelling herein, Lord, we come and we say, heal this land, Lord, like only you can. Touch each and every heart, Lord, like only you can. Heal each and every broken heart. Regulate each and every mind like only you can. Lord, we come thanking you for the strength that we feel even now. Lord, and we pray for our brothers and our sisters across this land. Lord, touch them. Lord, heal them. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And continue to bless our man of God that's going to proclaim your word on this morning. Lord, touch his body from the top of his head. Lord, to the soles of his feet. Lord, crown him with wisdom. Lord, crown them with a word, a word that's going to change our direction, a word that's going to change lives, a word that's going to invoke your presence and your spirit. Lord, we believe it. We count it done. In your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. Each and every heart said amen. Come on and put your hands together. Amen. For being more than conquerors. Amen. For whatever it is you're encountering. Amen. You are more than conquerors. Amen. We ask that you now prepare yourself for the announcements. Amen. As well as a benevolent offering. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Malrose, and these are your weekly announcements. Family Bible Institute will be on Tuesday. Each member is encouraged to attend Bible study. The Women of Worship will rehearse on Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. and Voices of Thunder at 8.15 p.m. If you want to join a ministry at Malrose, both these ministries are extending an invitation. Have you joined Gideon's Army? We want everyone to be a part of the building of our new worship center. 
Suggested contributions are $7 a week or $365 a year. All young adult ladies ages 18 through 25 years old, please meet with Minister Princess Hopes and Brother A.D. Parnell following both services over in the area near the baptismal is located. The Seeds of a Soaring Scholar nonprofit organization is extending an awesome opportunity for any student grades 4 through 12 in the Dallas area to participate and submit in the essay contest from February 1st through March 15, 2018. On April 21st, 2018, those selected individuals in grades 4 through 12 who are picked as the finalists for the topic entitled, If Given an Educational Seed, I Would will attend a special benefit ceremony at the Mount Rose Church. For more information, parents and students can see Sister Will Hype. I'm a Dean Scholarship Ministry Leader for more information. If you are interested in becoming a vendor for the event benefit, please see Brother Parnell or Sister Watson. Minister William Hill and Brother Kenneth Walker will be hosting Biblical Parenting, equipping our parents to bring out the best in our children and youth to be held on Wednesday, March 7th at 7 o'clock p.m. All school-aged children and their parents are invited to come to this session. When writing a check to the church, please make it payable to Mount Rose Church and not Mount Rose. When completing your envelope, please write legibly and fill in your first, last name, date, and amount. It's not important to complete the address or email unless there is a change or update. Thought for the week from Bishop Thomas. You don't fight a storm, you have to let it ride. Good morning, Mount Rose. I'd like to acknowledge our guests at this time. So if you're visiting with Mount Rose for the first time, would you please stand? Amen. On behalf of Bishop Thomas and the Mount Rose Church family, we'd like to welcome you and we thank you for coming. If you would stop by the media table immediately following service, we do have a gift for you. Thank you.
our heads, God, we just love you. And if adoring you is another level, we adore you. We magnify and we lift up your most holy and righteous name. Thank you for the song ministry. Thank you for opening up your vessel to pour on to us this morning. We, we've all seen you do it in so many different ways because you are awesome, God. Now, God, I ask that you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my sincere heart to be acceptable in your sight for you are my strength and my redeemer for it is in the strong name of Jesus we pray and we say thank you in advance the people of God said amen if you're not too stiff this morning come on let's put our hands together and give a clap unto the Lord a praise unto the Lord amen good morning saints we greet you today in the grace of our God father our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ amen for our God is indeed worthy to be praised. Amen. I'm going to call our attention this morning to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, down verse 13. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, around verse 13 or 14. When you find it, would you say amen? amen? I'll be reading from the Message Bible. It will be worded a little different, but it, don't get nervous. Hold tight to good advice. Don't relax your grip. Guard it well. Your life is at stake. Hold tight to good advice. Don't relax your grip. Guard it well. Your life is at stake. You may be seated in the presence of God. King James Version, so that those of you who are a little on the edge wondering, am I at the right kind of church today? Says, hold on to instructions. They, uh, they make you feel better. Hold on to instructions. Keep her safe. Uh, the King James likens instructions to her. Uh, and when I checked last, wisdom is likened unto her. The church is a her, a bride. Just thought I'd put that out because there is to be some burden uh, a man can father can man can give the seed but the woman has to give the birth of it and we might have made a baby but I got to bring the baby the woman has to bring the baby for so take hold tight to instruction I, I, want, I just want to talk uh, from this subject briefly this morning Urshan you've been so kind our young people are doing a great job today aren't they amen if at first you don't succeed, amen. That's what I want to talk about this morning. If at first you don't succeed, would you share a habit of mine? Get all that frown off your face and just turn to somebody on your right and your left and say, neighbor, if at first you don't succeed, tell that other person the same thing. If at first you don't succeed. Now, am I at, I have our, we have our, our judges and our, our great people of our city who are here today. Come on, let's recognize them. And uh, Commissioner Price is our minister over, I made up this ministry this morning, ecumenical, political, public people. 
He processes those who come through the door. So if you came with him, you passed inspection. <laughs> Amen. Let's give it up for our man downtown as well. Amen. And so if you are wondering if you have one of them churches where, oh, Lord, I got to touch my neighbor. He knows it's flu season and it's strep, a strand B now and stuff. We don't need it. Yeah. But I do it uh, to make sure the person next to you don't go to sleep. <laughs> Amen. If at first you don't succeed. Now, I know a whole lot of you saying he's leaving a part of that out by saying that try, try again. That's how most of us grew up hearing that. If at first, to Brother Max and make sure that we didn't get discouraged so easily because a whole lot of us and somebody's saying, man, for real, he's saying this this morning, and I just talked to God about this last week. If at first you, you don't succeed, but I didn't put that other part on that. Try, try, try again. That was the secretary of the Mount Rose Church uh, in 1992 when I first was called to the pastorate. She said these words to me as... I embarked upon as a young man an uh, awesome journey of taking the helm of a mothership, which was the Mount Rose Church, uh, historical fourth oldest black church in the city of, of Dallas with, with its historical status. And then at 21 years of age, taking the helm of that ship uh, was, was a major thing for me. And I was nervous, you know I was nervous because some of the members didn't want me there, no way, amen. Uh, they want that, that somebody else with their selection, but however, God's purpose always prevails. And she said these words to me on several occasions when I got discouraged. She said, Reverend, that's when they used to call you Reverend, 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 nothing beats a failure but a try. <laughs> nothing beats a failure but a try. And isn't it amazing that the instructions that we gave our children as they were coming up, we find ourselves feeble in adhering to them ourselves. That we wanted them not to be easily defeated in life, but to always be go-getters and, and managers and being able to face adversity even when it was fierce and even to face life's challenges is that uh, uh, there are some things in life that you can dot i's and cross t's but when it gets proofread it's always a red mark on you i don't know about y'all but i couldn't stand to do everything the teacher told me to do i thought and then turn in that paper took my time writing on the line and stand uh spacing the end of sentences so that they wouldn't look like run on sentences and making sure I punctuated with periods, commas and colons and all that stuff. And then just knowing that when, and, and when I went to DISD, they had red pens. Then, and, and it would just be like they just drew a Picasso all over <laughs> everything that I had tried to do so orderly and, neat and found out something still wasn't right. And if you've experienced that before in life, you know how discouraging and disheartening and deflating that that could be sometimes. Well, today I, I, I want to share a brief sermon, which is so brief it's going to scare y'all. Amen. So brief it's going to scare you because it gets straight to the point if you're hearing and listening with an ear to hear from God right now. Hold tight to instructions. Guard it keep it safe because your life is at stake. Now today is youth day, but this message is for all those who are youthful in spirit as well. And no matter how old you are, you can, you can never get to the point to where you relax with instructions. Ooh. 
Y'all done tuned me out already. Cause that's that's really the problem with most of you grown folk. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You think 50 years have qualified you to be the doctor of life. And how many know life has some terms? Boy, life got some neighborhoods with new knowledge that if you go there, they can look at you and tell you, you're not from around here. <laughs> Do I have a witness? And, and you become a mark. You, you become a candidate to be tricked. And even tragedy may occur in your life. And it makes no difference because if you, if you run into enough people, and I'm not that old, I'm not at all, but if you run into enough people, you'll find out there's two types of people you just really don't even want to encounter. Uh, one of them is the ignorant folk. Y'all ain't running into none of them, right? Now, now, don't take ignorant as an insult to that degree. I'm not saying that. I'm, ignorant is the, 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 the ignoring of knowledge. It is not that you are, you know, just like it sounds. It, it, it's just saying that you are in the not knowing of the knowledge that is out there. And you're speaking from a dark place about something where light has already been shed. Ignorant people are, I just, I, I listen with the, with the help of the Holy Spirit. I stand there. But, but I tell you another one. To the other extreme of the pendulum, uh, intelligent folk. See, to the other end of the pendulum, ignorant people don't want you telling them nothing. And intelligent folk, don't y'all get mad now, and intelligent people think they know everything. Grandmama says, somebody can always teach you something. That we should go through life grasping and grabbing every knowledge and experience that we can because our life is at stake. Pretty sure that our, our dignitaries here today have witnessed many times in, in your, your daily service to the community how a lot of times people wind up in bad situations because they didn't follow instructions. My God, I wish I had a witness here. I, I mean, their, their decisions are based upon the knowledge that some people uh, failed to regard, but they disregard it. And now they have to pay terrible yeah, expenses. Watch this. Uh, experience is a good teacher. The only thing is the tuition is mighty high. I ought to get an amen on that one right there. I ought to get an amen on that one. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you all not have to go through life having to learn every lesson. Because life is learning, but there are some lessons in life you ought not have to learn. You ought to just let somebody teach you. Woo, y'all done got real quiet now. Because right now, you frowned up at me. You mad at God right now, and I'm speaking on his behalf only to remind you, you forgot to hold fast to what he's told you. You forgot to hold on to, to the, at, at, like, at a good grip, getting a real good grip on some things because they were going to take you somewhere in life that would treat you indifferently, but at the same time, uh, it'll set you apart. Well, I'm about through. Tell somebody your life is at stake. You ain't got time to be playing and bending and, and finding loopholes and all that kind of stuff. You, you got to acknowledge the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Not with some of your heart, but with all of your heart. And lean not. Tell somebody it's not a time to trust yourself no more. You can't trust yourself no more because self got you where you are right now. Seth, Seth got you in the predicament you're in right now. Seth said, let's take the bypass and get off the main road. Seth said, there got to be a shortcut to this. Seth said, I shouldn't have to do this like everybody else. But how many know you can't trust yourself in these times? And lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways. 
Acknowledge God and he shall direct your path. I'm through. But there's a story I read. A story I came across when I was going over some of this uh, material. Uh, and I was sitting there while the, the choir was, the praise team was ministering and trying to get, make sure I had it right. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to stand up before people because they get ready for church and all that. Y'all looking good. And you come get disappointed if you get all dressed up and Reb didn't do too good today. <laughs> I wore my, I could have saved this suit. But, it's good. but anyway, I, was, I read this story and it said this. It said that an ensign in the naval forces was given the opportunity, which was apprentice, some would call an apprentice, uh, was given the opportunity to, to run the ship to get it from the harbor out into the sea. It was a destroyer. It was called what they called a destroyer. A ship was called a destroyer. And uh, all while he was uh, on board, the, the emphasis was being placed on reading the ship's manual. That every soldier should acquaint themselves with the ship's manual. I mean, really, if you're going to do law, you ought to acquaint yourself with it. Am I right about it? I got a man right there on that road. If you're going to preach, you ought to read the Bible. It's just, if you're going to speak for God, you need to know what he said. Y'all done got real quiet. If, so anyway, if you didn't get it, I, ain't, I left you. I'm gone. Listen, so, so, so he, 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 he was emphasized and enforced to make sure you read because at the end of the tour or the training, some lucky soldier would be selected to carry out the ship's manual. What an honor it would be for any soldier. That was the honor placed upon them in finishing the tour is to be selected to take the helm of the ship and become the captain. That, that, to, 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 to move this, this tank from harbor to the depths of the sea. What an honor for any soldier to, at the end of his tour to be selected to be able to drive the ship like it was his. Well, this young man was selected, and he got a hold to the ship. He took the helm of the ship, made sure everything was in line. There was a buzz. The story said there was a buzzing in the air of the seamen that were accompanying him and making sure everything was taken away. As a matter of fact, they said he did it in record time. He managed that ship in record time, so to the point to where he received a message from the captain. And when they brought him the message, he opened the message up. And the, the, the captain was congratulating him on such uh, a very efficient job and, and even the record time for being able to move the destroyer from the harbor to the depths. And the captain was just all oh, giving him praise and thanking him, and, and, and then he, he read on to where the captain say, but there was only one thing. There is an unwritten law that you forgot, and that is, first thing, make sure the captain is on the ship. Y'all real slow this morning. And doesn't that sound like a whole lot of us today? We got so excited with the experience that we did everything that we felt needed to be done, but there was one vital piece of information, one vital person you left out of your life, and that was you forgot to put God on the ship. I just need at least 15 people to know you can't make it without God. You, 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 you can make it, but you can't make it without him. You, you can struggle, but you won't strive. You, you can exist, but you won't live. But he says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have life 
more abundantly. When you go through what you're going through, when you do what you do, make sure after you've done everything you know to do, uh, make sure that the unwritten law is not left unattended. Make sure you put God on board. Boy, I wish I had some help right there. How many know that, that, that we've got to understand that first things come first? That if you want life, you've got to know what life is. It's in him that we live, that we move, and that we have our being. I know y'all being shy because we got guests this morning, but I've got some folk who don't care that are shout right now. I can't make it without him. I need the Lord to guide me every day as I travel along this narrow way. Though afflictions press my soul, I'm determined to reach my goal. I've got to have Jesus or oh, I just can't make it by myself. Tell three people, don't forget to put God in your life. But seek ye first. Can we go and have a little church? But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And all of his righteousness. And all of these other things. Shall be added unto you. Listen you're doing a good job. But you forgot one thing. Instead of you talking to the captain, you had to get a message from the captain. Because you forgot to make sure he was on board. Well, if you don't know who the captain is today, if you don't know nothing about this whole ship they call Zaya, Big Mama would say right about now, King Jesus is our captain. Get on board. Get on board. They would say, Tills the old ship of Zion. Get on, y'all, y'all, y'all ought not let the guests make y'all act like this. Get on board. Say, get on board. Ain't no danger in God's water. Get on board. Get on board. It has landed many thousands. Get on board. Get on board. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout, don't forget God. Don't, don't, don't forget you. You got the education, you, you got the position, you, you got the prestige, you got the popularity, and you think you got the power. You got everything but one thing. You forgot God. It's in him. Maybe it ain't going right. Maybe that's why you keep coming to that barricade in the road might be due to the fact it's hard to kick against the pricks. Amen. I'll say amen for you. It's hard to kick against the pricks. Listen, <clears throat> now you may not know what pricks are, but you do know this. Big Mama said it like this. He's so wide you can't get around him. You, you know, they couldn't read, but they knew God. He's so low, you can't go under him. He's so high, you can't get over him. You've got to come in at the door. Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can get to the Father except he come by me. If you've been blessed, give God praise. If God spoke and confirmed and validated some areas in your life, come on, give him praise for that. I hear somebody along with me right now saying, you know, I forgot everything but God. It's like many times on Sunday morning, 
I'm late because I'm trying to make sure I'm putting everything in the car and then to get in the car and find I can't go nowhere because I left the key. That's kind of how it is, y'all. That's, that's kind of how it is. If you don't, God is the key to this thing. If, if you forget him, you can't go. You got a nice automobile vehicle with all the amenities, the navigation, the, the talk to me, the Siri, the all of this heated seats, vibrating lumbars. And, or you just got a car with a seat belt. That's just, you know, you, I mean, be thankful, be content with because you ain't got to ask nobody to take you nowhere. Just fasten your seat better. And, 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 and it doesn't matter if it's a Bentley or if it's a bucket. It ain't going nowhere without the keys. Life won't even get started. Before I started driving, door the church is open, we extend the privilege of the church. Before I started driving, y'all, I used to drive in my mind. You know, in our neighborhood, you had to have at least five cars to make up one. So my dad would always have an extra car around, and so I would go out. I didn't care. Wasn't supposed to be in it, but I would go out in that car and ran, ran in that hot summer and sit in that car. And I drive about to have a heat stroke, didn't even know it, just to be behind the wheel. And I would in my mind drive to the church and drive over my friend's house, and then you know I had to go by my girlfriend's house. Just sitting in there going to the mall and then going to the restaurant, just sitting there and ain't going. But in my mind, I said, when I get my driver's license, I'm going to go all these places. Well, if that's somebody who's here today, you like me, you don't have driver's license, you sit in the car that's not going to move because you don't have keys. Christ is the key. Christ is the key. And then he told Peter, he says, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. He says, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom, Peter, that you may unlock it. He says, and use your keys. What were the keys that he gave Peter? Forgiveness, first of all. Learn how to forgive because you've been forgiven. Fellowship. Fellowship with the saints. Sometimes we get so caught up in life, we forget to fellowship with one another. You know, you need somebody to tap you on your shoulder and snap you out of it sometimes. To help you to remember that you wear titles, but you're still a child of God. Do I have a witness here? And then faith. Faith is the key. Faith is the key to the kingdom. Faith. Faith, faith unlocks the door because faith without works is dead. And at this moment, I want to encourage you to step out on faith. Look at God today, hand you the keys to what you've been trying to do. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I Trust him in his presence daily. Live. Would you come? All to Jesus. Trust God today. I surrender. 